Is this the end of software engineering as we know it? It is our job to create computing technology such that nobody has to program. And so I'd say maybe 20, 30 percent of the code that is inside of our repos today in some of our projects are probably all uh, written by software. In the next year, probably, you know, I don't know, maybe half the development is going to be done by AI. Last week, my friend, a senior software engineer at Microsoft with 12 years of experience, got laid off. And his replacement wasn't another developer. It wasn't even a person. We are witnessing the biggest shift in tech for decades. And most software engineers are in complete denial about what's really happening. In 2024 alone, over 260,000 tech workers lost their jobs. So far this year, more than 166,000 tech workers have been laid off, with a significant portion of them being software engineers. Open job postings for software engineers is at the lowest point it has been in the last five years. But that's nothing compared to what is coming because we are on the verge of a complete transformation of how software gets built. And the wildest part is that the very people who created this technology are about to become its first casualties. Right now, there's an estimated 4.4 million software developers in the United States. Globally, that number jumps to around 47 million. That's 47 million engineers whose careers is primarily based on translating human ideas into computer code. But what happens when computers can do that translation themselves? What happens when AI doesn't just assist with coding, but replaces the need for coders entirely. Well, we are about to find out because that future that I was talking about is not actually five years away. It's not even one year away. It's happening right now. In this video, we'll trace the rise and fall of software engineering, expose the trap that 84% of developers have already fallen into, and reveal why the very people building AI are unknowingly coding themselves out of existence. Now, to understand how we got here, we have to go back in time. For 30 years, software engineering was the golden ticket. The dream career. A sure way path to the American dream. Picture this. It's 1999 and the dot-com boom is in full swing. Kids barely out of college are becoming millionaires overnight. Not from inheritance, but from writing code. PayPal's early engineers and founders, the PayPal Mafia, would go on to create YouTube, LinkedIn, Tesla, and fund Facebook. These weren't seasoned executives. They were 20-somethings who knew how to code. The 2000s transformed everything. Amazon went from the online bookstore to the everything store. Google invented the modern tech culture. You know, those day in the life TikToks that we're all too familiar with today. They all stemmed from Google's initiatives, whether it was free food or 20% time. They made being a software engineer cool. And then there is Apple, who in 2007, with the launch of the iPhone, literally just changed how everyone communicates. Engineers in their 20s and their 30s were getting sign-on bonuses bigger than their parents' retirement savings. Stock options that turned into Manhattan penthouses. Then came the 2010s. That's when it went absolutely nuclear. Facebook went from a college project to connecting a billion people. And let's just ignore the controversy around Zuck for now, but WhatsApp, built by just 55 engineers, sold for $19 billion. Instagram, 13 employees, sold for $1 billion. Minecraft, Basically, one guy in his bedroom sold for $2.5 billion. The message from Wall Street was crystal clear. Learn to code, build something, and become ungodly rich. Life was practically on easy mode. Starting salaries for new grads was six figures. PTO that people actually took work from anywhere way before the pandemic made it a thing. Boot camps started to explode, promising to turn anyone into a software engineer in six months. Every parent's dream was for their kid to work at a fan company. Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google. It was the new my kid's a doctor. Actually, it was better because you got paid more and you didn't need a decade of school to get in. All of this to say, software engineering wasn't just a career, it was the career. The skills that would define the 21st century. Technology was only going to get more important. Software was only going to eat more of the world. The demand for software engineers was supposedly infinite. And that was until November 30th, 2022. The day OpenAI released ChatGPT and everything changed. Within five days, a million users. Within two months, 100 million. The fastest growing application in human history. But while everyone was asking it to write content or explain quantum physics like they are five years old, something else was happening behind the scenes. Developers started feeding it code and AI was understanding it. Not just understanding it, it could write it, debug it, optimize it. At first, engineers laughed it off. 
Sure, it can write some simple code, but can it build real applications? Can it handle production level complexity? Then GitHub Copilot evolved from the autocomplete tool to something that could write entire functions and multi-step coding tasks. Not long after, Cursor arrived, turning natural language into working applications. And today, with the latest Claude Sonnet 4.5, the game has completely changed. What used to take weeks, Claude can now just do in a few hours. And we've now reached a tipping point, the point of no return. And things are only going to get worse from here. Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella revealed that 30% of all code at Microsoft is now AI generated. Google, 25% and climbing fast. Meta, similar numbers. Some startups are reporting 50%, 60%, and even 70% of their code bases is AI written. The CEO of Salesforce just said the quiet part out loud. His company might not need to hire any engineers because AI agents are already doing the work. But here is what should really terrify every software engineer watching this. The exponential rate of adoption. Stack Overflow, you know, the online forum whose entire business model was developers helping other developers, just confirmed that 84% of engineers now prefer asking AI for help instead. Quite the irony. Over half, 51% use AI tools every single day. That's not experimentation anymore. That's crack-like dependency. And what about the AI slot? I can hear some of you say, well, AI generated code sucks and it's buggy. And yeah, I mean, from my own experience building my own software company, that's true. And the data supports this as well. Only 3% of developers actually trust AI's output. 46% actively distrust it. Yet they're all using it anyway. But why? Well, because they have no choice. The engineers who don't use AI are getting completely destroyed by those who do. It's an arms race. And if you're not using AI, your productivity is going to suffer. And with all of the layoffs in tech right now, it's too much of a gamble to be the one engineer that refuses to adapt to the new reality. The agenda has been set by big tech. We must implement AI. So you either get in line or you risk giving your employer a chance to let you go. But it's a double-edged sword because software engineers are becoming increasingly dependent on the very technology that's replacing them. Every time they let AI generate code for them, they are feeding the machine that's learning to do their job. The instant gratification is undeniable. And I've experienced this myself. Why spend 30 minutes writing a complex algorithm when AI can just do it for you in 30 seconds? Why debug for hours when AI can spot potential issues immediately? That dopamine hit coupled with faster development is addictive. And the biggest complaint from developers, well, 66% say AI gives solutions that are almost right, but not quite. And here is the thing. Every day, every update, every new model release, the gap between almost right and perfect gets smaller. What happens when AI hits 95% accuracy? What about 99%? At what point does the human in the loop become unnecessary? Well, we are about to find out because at this rate of improvement, we are only 18 months away from AI that doesn't need any human oversight at all. And every engineer using AI today is accelerating that timeline. The tragedy is, they know it, but they can't stop it because if they stop using AI while their colleagues continue, they'll be unemployed even sooner. It's the perfect trap and there's no way out. Now let's talk about money, because let's be real, when big corporations are involved, it's always about the money. Take a software engineer in San Francisco making $350,000 per year, and they work 20 to 30 productive hours a week because most people's attention span is cooked from the endless doom scrolling. Billion dollar idea, by the way, is someone saving everyone from doom scrolling. Anyway, so what's the cost for AI that can code? A couple of hundred bucks, maybe you're looking at a couple of thousands as you start to scale a few AI agents, but they work around the clock. 168 hours a week, never take vacation, never get sick, never argues about technical decisions, never threatens to quit for a better offer, never needs equity. So can you see why it's so appealing? Combined with investor pressure and your stock being rewarded when your company announces AI layoffs, the math isn't just compelling, it's inevitable. Okay, so is there any sort of silver lining in all of this? Andre Karpathy, a former OpenAI researcher and ex-Tesla's AI director, says this isn't just about replacing coders. It's about fundamentally changing what software development means. He calls it software 2.0. A large portion of programmers of tomorrow do not need to maintain complex software repositories, write intricate programs, or analyze their running times. They collect, clean, manipulate, label, analyze, and visualize data 
that feeds neural networks. He believes the job isn't disappearing, it's just transforming into something completely unrecognizable. So we are moving from software 1.0, where humans write explicit instructions in language like Python or JavaScript, to software 2.0, where we just show AI examples of what we want, and then it figures out how to build it. No more programming languages that take years to master, no more frameworks that change every six months, no more stack overflow copy and pasting, just human intent translated directly into working software. Imagine describing your app idea in plain English and having it built, tested, and deployed whilst you're still talking. That's the vision of software 2.0, and it's actually happening right now with all the vibe coding that we are seeing. Now, some of you are thinking, but we always need someone to oversee AI, to review the code, to understand business needs, the classic human in the loop. Now, the truth is most software engineers are still in complete denial. Go where the devs are hanging out, Reddit, Twitter, YouTube comments, and you'll see these exact arguments repeated thousands of times. Sure, you might need a senior engineer, but how many? If one person with AI can do the work of five engineers, what happens to the other four? Spoiler alert, they get laid off, which might go some way to explaining why we're seeing a bloodbath when it comes to junior and entry-level coding positions, which have dropped 67% since 2022. Entry-level coding jobs basically don't exist anymore, but on the other side, computer science grads are being pumped out by universities as much as they used to, even though this job market for graduates is the toughest it's ever been. So what happens next? I don't know if all of this is necessarily a bad thing, but it really depends on which lens that you see things. On the one side, for a lot of engineers, this stuff can be hard to take, but this is the unfortunate reality of working in tech. You can't have the big money and lifestyle without having this pressure and constantly needing to adapt to new ways of working and new technologies. It's just part of the game that you sign up for. In some way, this might be the best thing that has ever happened to creativity. Now think about this for a moment. In a world where everyone can build software, and due to AI, coding becomes democratized. You can basically describe exactly what you want in a software 2.0 world and everything works as intended. The barrier between idea and implementation basically disappears. So what becomes possible then? When regular people can spin up solutions without touching Python or C++, I think that world is where the real innovation will begin. The end of software engineering as we know it isn't the end of innovation. It's the beginning of something that we can't even imagine yet.